Howdy everyone, you ready to look at God's Word? I know I am. But before you do, we do, let's bow in a word of prayer. Oh gracious and glorious Heavenly Father, we lift up our spirit to you, Lord. We thank you and we ask you to fill us with your Holy Spirit. I pray for this day. I thank you for the rain that come, came down here in dry Nebraska. And, and it's supposed to rain for a while. So we just thank you for that rain. <coughs> and now, Lord, <coughs> I ask you to touch me since I'm battling allergies and maybe a cold. But Lord, just open our eyes to your word. May we see the truth of what you want us to see. And thank you for everything you do for us. And please, Lord, just open our hearts with your Holy Spirit to your word. In Jesus' loving and blessed name, amen. You know, this is a wonderful passage in Titus. Titus 2. We'll read through the whole chapter, then we'll read out of chapter 3 after that. But this chapter is about proclaiming sovereign doctrine. But as for you, speak the things which are fitting for sound doctrine. Older man are to be temperate, dignified, sensible, sound in faith, in love, in perseverance. Older women likewise are to be reverent in their behavior, not malicious gossips, not enslaved to much wine, teaching what is good, that they may encourage the young women to love their husband, to love their children. To be sensible, pure workers at home, kind being subject to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be dishonored. Likewise, urge the young men to be sensible. In all things, show yourself to be an example of good deeds with purity and doctrine dignified, sound in speech, this is beyond reproach, in order that the opponent may be put to shame, having nothing bad to say about us. Urn, urge bond slaves to be subject to their own masters, in everything to be well-pleasing, nor argumentative, nor pilfering, but showing all good faith that they may adorn <coughs> the doctrine of God, our, our Savior in every respect. For the grace of God has appeared bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desire, and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and pure, purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good deeds. These things speak and exhort and reprove with all authority, let no one disregard you. You know, the, this chapter starts out and it states what, about sound doctrine. But as you speak, when we speak, we're, the things are fitting for sound doctrine. So we're only supposed to speak the things that are sound doctrine, which is, comes from this word, the word of God. Older men are to be temperate, 
We're not supposed to be drunks. I used to be a drunk. I know all about that. Dignified, sensible, sound in faith, in love, and perseverance. So we're supposed to set an example. And we'll be talking about that to younger men. Sensible, sound, in faith, in love. We're supposed to show our love and in perseverance as we guide on through. Older women, I, I love this. It reminds me of my mother. Older women, likewise, are to be reverent. They're to be reverent in their behavior. Not malicious gossips. We Women don't gossip. Men gossip too, but this is aimed at older women. Not enslaved to much wine, so don't be hiding that bottle of wine away you know, like some people do. Teaching what is good. So that's that they may encourage okay, teaching what is good. That they may encourage the young women to love their husbands, to love their children. And that was my mama. She loved us very much. To be sensible, pure workers at home, kind being subject to their own husbands, that the word of God may be not be dishonored. So they're supposed to say example for the younger women by their actions, by how they dress, by how they worship God. Women are supposed to help guide these young women. And you know, here's a picture. I hope you can see that. That was my mama when she got this Bible. Look at it. It's worn out. But that was her goal was her love for her family and and she was dedicated to us and she, and she, she was a servant to Jesus. And she set an example. And, and other older women. Now I'm an older guy, and I'm one of the older men now. And 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 I, we've been given the duty to serve the younger people and to set examples. Likewise, urge the young men to be sensible. Have them be sensible. In all things, show yourself to be an example to good deeds. So we're supposed to show good deeds. We're supposed to show purity, and we're supposed to show sound doctrine and be dignified So these, to set example for these young men. In sound speech, which is beyond reproach, in order that the opponent may be put to shame, who is the Satan is the opponent, and there are other opponents that Satan uses to attack Christianity and to attack our faith and we we're maybe put to shame having nothing bad to say about us so we're supposed to set these examples it's just said for men and women okay Earn, urge bond slaves to be subject to their own masters and everything to be well pleasing nor argumentative not pilfering, but showing all good faith that they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in every respect. So, I compared slaves and masters, in this case, as a boss and the worker. So the workers, as workers, we aren't supposed to be argumentative. We're supposed to be sensible. Well, excuse me, we're supposed to be well-pleasing to our master, to our boss. We have to be well-pleasing to our boss. Nor don't argue with them. Don't steal, don't pilfer from your boss. But show all good faith and show good doctrine. And that sets an example for the boss. Maybe your boss isn't a believer in Jesus Christ. Maybe you can set that example to open that door for the Holy Spirit to come in and your boss could be saved. So set an example. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men. So God's appeared, bringing us all salvation. 
instructing us to deny ungodly and worldly desires. So we're supposed to stay away from the our sin and, and those old things of our past. And, and Satan's still going to tempt us, and we're supposed to turn to God righteously and godly in the present age. And now, looking for the blessed hope and appearance. So we're looking for the blessed hope and the glory of God. Jesus Christ when he comes again. That's what we should be doing. We should be looking forward to that. And we're supposed to set examples for the younger people. And if you're a boss, you set an example by treating your your workers right. And if your workers if you're if you're a worker and you're a Christian, set an example, as it said, for your boss, so he can learn about Jesus Christ if he doesn't know him. And then it goes on to say, He gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself a people that are that are that are zealous for good deeds. So we're supposed to be zealous for good deeds when we're true believers in Jesus Christ. And, and that's why Jesus came. He came here to die for us. He came here so we could be saved from hell. And that's why Jesus came. And when we turn to him, this will happen. These things speak and exhort and reprove with all authority. Let no one disregard you. So if someone says, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You're just a stupid Christian. Don't disregard it. Defend Christianity. Don't argue. Do it with love. Most people are they are that way are probably angry people to begin with, a lot of them. They don't know the truth of Jesus Christ. And this gives you the opportunity to show that love and, and, and to show the truth of Jesus. That he died on the cross. He rose from the dead in three days. And he took our sins upon his back. But we must repent first. And that's the key. Okay, now we're going to look at the next 11 verses, Godly Living. This is Titus chapter 3, 1 through 11. Remind them to be subject to rulers, to authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good deed, to malign no one, to be uncontentious, gentle, showing every consideration for all men. For we also once were foolish ourselves, disobedient, deceivers, enslaved to various lusts and pleasures, spending our life to malice and envy, hateful hating one another. But when the kindness of God our Savior and his love for mankind appeared, he saved us, not on the basis of deeds, which we have done in righteousness, but according to his mercy, by the washing and regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit, who he poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we might be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy statement and concerning these things, I want you to speak confidently so that those who have believed God may be careful to engage in good deeds. These things are good and profitable for men. But shun foolish controversies and genealogies and strife and disputes about the law, for they are unprofitable and worthless. Reject affection man after a first and second warning, <clears throat> knowing that such a man is perverted and is sinning, being self-condemned. That's some serious stuff there at the end. We'll be talking about that. Let's go back to verse 1, chapter 3, verse 1. Remind them, remind them to be subject to rulers. We're supposed to be subject to rulers. I don't care if you're a Democrat or a Republican. This is for the United States people, people around the world. We're supposed to be subject to them. 
and we're supposed to and we aren't supposed to gripe and moan about them. One of the worst Christian things they see is people griping and moaning about you know Biden this, Trump this. No, we're supposed to right here be subject to them, whoever the ruler is, to authorities and be obedient to be ready in every good deed. So we're supposed to be showing good deeds and we're supposed to be subject. We aren't supposed to malign, to malign no one, to be uncontemptuous, gentle, showing every consideration for all men. So we're supposed to show love and consideration for everyone. Even these people, I must, see, I almost was judging there, I almost called them an idiot. But even these people that, that you just want to just grab them and shake them, you have to love them. You should love them. You don't have to, but you should. For we also once were foolish. See, we were once like these people. We once were foolish ourselves. We once were disobedient to God. We deceived and enslaved to various lusts and pleasures. So we, 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 we were once like them before God pulled us out of that, this terrible lifestyle. For me, it was drugs and alcohol and, and sex and all kinds of different things that we, I don't want to go into, but they all sort of went together. But I was a terrible, terrible sinner, but God pulled me out of that. And we're... We were once enslaved to various lusts and pleasures, spending our life in malice and every hateful hating one another. So we used to be judging others. We said, oh, I don't like that guy. He's just such a jerk. You no, know, we aren't supposed to be like that. We're supposed to be loving and caring for our fellow man. And I like this because this is about Jesus setting our example. But when the kindness of God, our Savior, and his love for mankind appeared, he saved us. So when Jesus appeared, he saved us, not on the basis of our deeds, which we have done in righteousness, which we do when we're being right, we're doing good deeds. But that's not why you're saved. You're saved because of Jesus. But according to his mercy by the washing of regeneration, and renewing by the Holy Spirit. So we are reborn because Jesus died on the cross and, and, and the Holy Spirit can renew us and turn us into a new person whom he poured out upon us richly. We don't change. Jesus changes us. He gives us the Holy Spirit to change us. And that's what it's all about, folks. <laughs> Because he poured out the Holy Spirit upon us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. That being justified by his grace, it, we, were, we were justified by Jesus' grace to be saved. We, we might be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And so when we are saved... That's how you get eternal life. When you turn your life to Jesus Christ and you, and, and you dedicate your life to Jesus Christ, you will be saved. You aren't saved by deeds, as it said here in verse 5. We're saved because Jesus died on the cross, rose from the dead after three days, and he was a ultimate sacrifice on the cross for you and for me. He did it for us. And we got to start realizing this more and more. I think every day we need to think about this, what Jesus did for us. It goes on to say this after this, this was a trustworthy statement and concerning these things, I want you to speak confidently. So when we talk about Jesus Christ, do it confidently. Not, don't go, yeah, I'm Christian. You know, he saved me. He died on the cross for our sins and he rose from the dead. 
No, we're supposed to be excited about it. We're supposed to be happy. We're supposed to show that vigor, that joy that Jesus did for us. Never lose that. A lot of Christians, when they first believe they like that, but then they just mellow out into the, the sunset, as I was going to say. And they just mellow out and become part of the group. No! We're supposed to be out there telling others about Jesus. That's our job as Christians. Then it goes on to say that those who have believed God have to be careful to engage in good deeds. So we're supposed to do good deeds. We aren't just saying we're supposed to do good deeds. It doesn't save us, but that's what we're supposed to do. It sets an example of our Christianity. These things are good and profitable for men. So this isn't just profitable for you or me. It's profitable for all men to be doing good deeds. And shun foolish controversy. So don't get in arguments. Shun them. Get away from them. Stay away from them. And genealogies. And strife and disputes about the law. Don't fight over the, what the law says. Just do what's right. What's righteous. And do what God tells us to do. For they are unprofitable and worthless. So arguing and doing all this stuff like some people do over God... It's a worthless cause, people. Walk away. Shun it. Reject factions of men after a first and second warning. So warn them twice. And if they, they don't listen, just walk away. Walk away. Knowing that such a man is perverted and is sinning, being self-condemned. So usually a person that's doing this kind of stuff he's he's talking from himself and at the same time he's condemning himself or her. You know, this was some really heavy stuff here at the end. And this is how we're supposed to live. We're supposed to live for Jesus Christ. We're supposed to show our good deeds. We're supposed to love and care for others. And don't force you to do it. You should do it out of the kindness of your heart when you do things. You know, it, just show the love of Jesus to others. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you each other, like Ying Kai said right here at Open Arms. He said, I asked him, what's the greatest thing you have? And he, his churches have two million people baptized because of these home churches all over China. He's kicked out of China because of his belief in Jesus. But I asked him, what's the greatest thing you could tell me? And, and he, he said this, and I've, I'm probably repeating myself, but I've said this before. This is what he said. Every day, ask the Holy Spirit to fill you, to be filled with his, the Holy Spirit. And your day will go better, I guarantee it. And, and just young and men... Older and men and women set an example for younger people. Bosses, if you're a worker, treat your boss with respect. Most of all, show your love and care for others through your Christian faith. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Oh, gracious and glorious Heavenly Father, this is a very inspiring and, and, and touching thing. We're supposed to have godly living. We're supposed to live for God. We're supposed to cast those foolish things out, depending upon the Holy Spirit. And I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit today. Fill those listening to your Holy Spirit. I want to lift this day up to you. And I just want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done. In Jesus' blessed name, amen. Okay, everyone. Everyone have a good week this week. And we'll see you next Sunday.